Welcome to Chi Yoga for a Happy Spine. This is volume three. Make sure you watch those other two. Quick reminder, this is not medical advice. For this session, you might need some blocks or even books will work or anything you can use to stack yourself up with. And you might also want a chair like this folding chair that I have here. That said, let's get into it. We're gonna start seated. I'm shown here sitting on the floor, but you could also do this sitting in a chair. And we're just gonna take a moment and let the body settle so that it feels effortlessly upright. Let your head gently lift up, let your muscles fall with the force of gravity. In yogic tradition, they imagine like a spiritual spine in the center of the body, lifting you up. Now we're gonna take this twist. So you take one hand over to your opposite knee, the other hand behind you. We're gonna inhale and lift that inner central spine. And as you exhale, relax a little further into the twist. We've got about one more breath here. The inhale lifts up. Exhale relaxes a little further. And then on an inhale, come back to center. Settle for a moment. And then you'll head over to the other side. Hand goes to the opposite knee. It's the same if you're in a chair as if you're on the floor. Inhale, lifting up like through this little central channel right in the middle of the body to the crown. On the exhale, you twist a little further into the stretch. The inhale lifts you up. The exhale, you relax a little further into the stretch. Coming on back on an inhale. Now we're gonna take ourselves into a side bend. So you're gonna take one hand over. I like to be on my fingertips personally. The arm is gonna go overhead. And same thing here, you can inhale and feel like this central channel of the body gets longer. And on the exhale, you can reach out a little further. These are just our warm ups, so you don't need your deepest stretch here. Breathing gently and naturally. And then heading to the other side, placing the hand down. You could go with your palm on the floor as well, or even use those blocks to find the perfect stretch for you. If you're in the chair, you can't reach the floor, but you can still reach up with that upward arm. Give yourself a gentle little side bend. Then coming on back to the center, and we're gonna move into this dragon spine undulation. We did this standing a couple of videos ago, but basically you're just making a wave through your spine. This is gonna to help to warm up all these tissues of the core of the body. And according to Qigong theory, it helps to massage these energy channels and their little acupoints that flow up through the spine and even down through the front. Then we're gonna rotate our navel. This is an old yogic exercise for developing the inner heat and unwinding the chakras. But here we're doing it just to loosen up these tissues. Go the other way. Just a gentle warm up, And then come back to center and again, envisioning this central spine from the crown of the head straight down through the base. Then we're gonna come up into a one knee lunge, into a one knee lunge. And we're gonna get started with a psoas stretch. So to stretch your psoas, you're gonna to need to keep the tailbone tucked under, and then you can come forward into that lunge. Then adding some movement, we're gonna inhale as the hands go up and we lunge forward, and exhale as we come on back. Keep that tailbone tucked under as you inhale, lunge forward. Exhale, come back, and one more time. Inhale, you should feel this maybe in the front of the thigh or even deep in the front of the abdomen. Inhale it up, and now we're gonna do side bends. In Qigong, this is called monkey picking fruit. So it's almost like you were picking the fruit up on a tree and it was just out of reach. You can breathe naturally on this one or coordinate the breath however you like with these movements. Finishing up, and we're gonna to go to the other side. So taking your kneeling lunge, however you wanna get there, I'm just doing this little knee, knee walk to get there, and basic psoas stretch. So the tailbone has to tuck under, and then you bring, see how that back leg is far in, in extension? Then we're gonna inhale up and moving lunge, and exhale, the arms come down. Inhale, this is also very good for the chi, Classical Qigong and key exercises from Japan use this type of movement. And exhale it on down. Inhale it up. 
And monkey picking fruit. So stretching, giving those side bodies a nice little side bend. And in this warm up section, we're just feeling like we're lengthening everything, warming up the tissues, everything very gentle. And come on down. Then we're going to move on to our bellies. So find a comfortable position lying on your stomach. We'll do the last of our warm ups, which is a little baby cobra. First, the shoulder loop, hands down by the bottom of the rib cage. You're going to shrug your shoulders into your ears, float the shoulder blades off your back, and then pull them together as you begin to lift up. And now the baby cobra, we're going to inhale as we lift up and exhale as we come down. I'm using mostly the strength of my arms here rather than doing this as a back exercise. And notice that I'm not cranking my head up and back. So I really want to lift the heart, even though the heart won't come through an awful lot in this baby cobra. You really want to make this a heart opening and gentle spinal extension exercise. Then come down and rest transitioning and now we are going to move into some core strengthening postures these come from the shaolin tradition come on to your back and let's get into it so when you're ready you're going to take your hands they're going to be in this diamond shape under your back thumbs are touching index fingers are touching covering over your kidneys and your lower back and then you're gonna inhale up into a bridge pose. And if you can, you're gonna hold your breath here for about a five count. Otherwise, just breathe naturally. And then you're gonna exhale down. Now the traditional visualization is as you inhale, you imagine a blue light, like from the whole universe. It comes in and fills your kidneys. And you're gonna hold your breath there, visualizing this blue light filling those kidneys. Again, feel free to breathe naturally if that breath hold is at all uncomfortable for you. Let's go one more time. On the inhale, the blue light comes in. You pause the breath. You feel those kidneys are glowing with this blue, blue color. After about five, you come on down. So that is to strengthen our back. And now we're gonna strengthen the core of the body with a couple little boat pose variations. So the hands are on the dantian below your belly button. And your first one is as you inhale, you're just gonna lift the head and shoulders up. Again, this has a held breath if you can, and it's just for that little five seconds. You could do that again, or the second one I'll recommend is you're gonna inhale and lift up your toes and your legs off of the floor. So here it goes, we inhale and you lift up. Do any of these you're comfortable with? Again, you can pause the breath here or breathe naturally. And then the inhalation, now we're gonna do both of those together if it's comfortable for you. And you imagine this time a red light coming into this lower belly center, your center of power in your lower tummy and you hold with that vision of a red light empowering this lower belly center. And then gently release down. Then we're gonna get ready to transition to a standing position. Make sure you do this by bending your knees and rolling to your side so that you keep your spine in this nice state of balance that we've been working to put it in rather than sort of just cranking it around like we sometimes can do. So come on up to standing. And now we're gonna work the fusion of fire and water. So you're gonna get into a horse stance. Feet are the width of the outside of your shoulders, one hand on the belly, one hand on the back. And you imagine this blue light from the kidneys and the red light from that belly are meeting together like a little yin-yang symbol swirling together and they're creating a steam that pervades your body, filling your body with a healing energy and power. Then we do a breathing exercise. So as you inhale, your hands come up, you feel that steam being formed. And as you exhale, it comes out through your hands, out through your feet, as the whole body is filled with the steam. So it's inhale, the fire and water mix. Exhale, whoosh, fills the whole body, even coming out of the palms and the soles. One more time, inhale. And exhale, steaming the entire body. Then the same thing we're gonna do with our hands out to the sides, inhale, 
and exhale. This healing steam fills the body and even comes out through the hands and the feet. Inhale. It mixes in the center of the belly and then exhale. One more time. Blue and red energy mixing together and a healing steam pervades the body. Now you can keep that visualization up as we go through the rest of the exercises if you like, or just let it go. But next we're gonna move into triangle pose. So here I turn my left toes out, my right toes in, and I take that side bend. Here's the variation with the block and the chair to make this triangle pose really easy for you. If you already know how to do a triangle pose, then obviously just do the version that works best for you. Breathing naturally, turning your heart up toward the ceiling, and then when you're ready, come on up. We're gonna to switch to the other side, and here's that standard triangle pose. The triangle pose is really valuable because it stretches your side bending muscles, but it strengthens them at the same time, and this becomes an expert pose for uh, twists in the spine, what do they call scoliosis. Uh, so we want to balance out stretching and strengthening these side bending muscles. Then when you come up, the traditional way is you can use your spine, the strength of your back muscles to lift you up. You can also see on the chair, I bend that front leg and actually use it to press myself up. So whichever one works best for you, that is our triangle pose. Now we'll turn back to the first side and you're going to come down into that kneeling lunge again. But here we are going to take the twisting side angle pose. So you can have one hand down and you twist into that bent leg or here's an easy variation with the block. And we just stay here and breathe for a moment. Just like before, you can inhale, feel the spine lengthen and you can exhale and relax into the twist. Then coming on down, and we're gonna take a hamstring stretch. So straightening out that front leg, if that's comfortable for you. And then here's the variation with my hands on the floor. Most of us though, will be a little more comfortable with our hands on blocks or bricks or a stack of books, whatever you might have handy. Don't put your hands on your knee because that kind of pressure, uh, hyperextending the knee can actually be bad for that joint. Working the right hip, that forward hip backward in space and you'll feel the stretch in the hamstring and once again lengthening the spine and shifting out of the pose and we are going to turn to our other side or in this case I'm going to switch legs this way so that you can see both sides of this pose on the video however you want to switch sides is fine so the twisting side angle either hand to the floor and you're twisting toward that forward leg or you can go up on the block as we saw before when you inhale, the spine gets long. When you exhale, you relax your way into that twist, then gently coming down and into the hamstring stretch. The hamstrings actually are pulling on the bottom of your sitting bones, the bottom of your hip, and so they can put your spine in the wrong position. So we're loosening those hamstrings up and this can be a great relief in some forms of back pain. Pulling that hip backward in space, moving the head away from the tailbone, so a long and strong spine, breathing naturally and easefully. And we're gonna gradually ease our way out of this pose. And we're gonna move into just a couple other core exercises. So one of the mysteries of back pain is that sometimes the back actually needs to be stronger for the pain to go away. So you're gonna come onto all fours, tabletop, for some, this is enough of a yoga pose. You could just stay here and gently engage your core. But if you'd like a little more, spreading your fingers to protect your wrist, and you're gonna bring one foot up behind you, and the head doesn't necessarily look up, but you're going to, again, extend out through that crown like you had this central spine running through the middle of your body and you wanted it to be nice and long. Just a couple breaths, bring it on down, and then we're gonna take the other leg up. So pushing the floor away from with your arms, stretching that foot behind you, stretching the head away from the foot, and you should probably feel your core muscles in your belly engaging, or at least in your back engaging. Bring this on down, 
And then we're going to go into the side plank. We're going to take this on our forearm because this can actually give the wrists a little break. And you're going to bring that top leg over so that you don't have to work too hard in this pose. Shine your hand up and you're in a side plank. And the, the muscles of your abdomen on the lower side, as well as the side muscles of your back, are going to get a really nice tone from this exercise. And then when you're ready, come on down carefully and gently. Now, if this doesn't work, I'm just going to demonstrate a little side sit up. You don't have to do this, but you're going to take your bottom arm and hug yourself. And then you could lift up just the upper body or I call it the floppy fish. You could lift the upper and lower body and you'll feel those side abs crunch. Okay, just a little option. The side plank doesn't work for everybody, but you could always do that side sit up. Then going to the other side. So forearm down and top leg, the foot is on the ground. That bottom leg is nice and straight and then you're gonna shine up that top arm and the lower side body, the lower abdomen and back muscles should be engaging to hold you up in this posture. And this is gonna really contribute a lot to being able to balance your spine side to side. And when those two sides work together, they keep the spine upright. Okay, let's see that little floppy fish side sit up. So my bottom hand is gonna come around and hug myself. My top hand, you're not really cranking the neck, although it does look like I'm getting a big range of motion. I'm trying to use my abs to lift my upper body. And then also I can float the lower body. Okay, turning onto your stomach. And now we are going to go back into one more back bend now that we're warmed up and we're gonna take the Sphinx pose. Shoulder loop, they go up into your ears, float off the back, and then pull your heart through. So the main idea in this pose is you're trying to pull and sort of yearn your heart through. And that's how we get a long back bend. Instead of crunching your lower back, we're actually extending the back. And this is gonna stretch your abdominal muscles that can keep you hunched over if they are too tight. So gentle breathing. Notice how I'm not craning my neck here either. If you like, if you need to, you can pull your chin back in space. And that finishes the pose. Then we're just gonna take our head down and rest it on our hands. You could also turn your head and look sideways here to either side. Just take a break. Enjoy the feeling that these postures have created in your body. And the best part of every session is the final rest. We're gonna do a traditional Shavasana, but the option I would like to suggest for you is that you take your chair, if you have a chair handy, and you're actually going to put the knees up on the chair. I learned this quite a while ago that this can help to decompress your spine, really puts the, spine, the lower spine in a nice neutral position. And so we're gonna hang out here for about three minutes Traditional Shavasana, just lying flat on the floor is also fine. Or you could make this with a big old bunch of pillows or with a couch or a coffee table. So whatever works for you. I'm resting my hands on my lower Dan Tian. Uh, this is this Qigong practice of concentrating the attention down in your center of gravity, your center of power. But feel free to put your hands in any position that is comfortable for you. Resting here. And just notice the effects of this session that we've done. Savor and enjoy anything that feels enjoyable or beneficial from your practice today. And then just letting that go. Abide for a moment in spaciousness and ease with nothing whatever to do. Feel free to stay here for longer if that's what your schedule permits, but I'll go ahead and invite those who need to finish up to take their legs off the chair and roll to their sides. 
You can take a break there on your side for a minute. And then when you are ready to come up, use your arms. So again, you're not tensing up or constricting that spine in any way that we just went to such great lengths to relax and balance. Thank you so much for participating in this practice today.